All right, pour yourself a coffee and sit down. I'm going to be going over a lot of numbers here, but I think by the end of this, it's going to be making a lot of sense to you. What we're looking at today is just a regular swimming pool. And by that, I mean, we're going to be looking at a 16 by 32 foot swimming pool with an average depth of about five feet. And it is approximately 20,000 gallons. Now, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at a single speed pump and an operating schedule for it compared to a variable speed pump and an operating schedule for that. And the first thing that we need to look at is the filtration goal. And in this case, it's going to be 60,000 gallons per day. You might be wondering, well, why is it 60,000 gallons? You just said it's a 20,000 gallon pool. How much are you supposed to filter your water anyway? Well, there is an answer to that. And the answer is you're supposed to filter all of your water every day. The thing about that is, is the water doesn't exactly line up in front of the suction and return ports. So you, you can't just pump 20,000 gallons of water and effectively filter all of your pool. In fact, if you only filtered 20,000 gallons of water, you would have only filtered about 63% of the, the pool water, leaving quite a bit of volume unfiltered. So 60,000 gallons of water per day represents about 95% of all of the water in your pool being filtered at least one time. For most residential swimming pools, effectively you can consider 95% to be all of the water in your swimming pool. But in some commercial applications, that wouldn't be good enough. And you'd have to add another turnover of the pool water. And then you'd be able to say that you have about 98% of all of the water in your pool being filtered at least one time. But for residential swimming pools, it's accepted that three times the volume of your swimming pool effectively is all of the water. And in this case, that's 60,000 gallons per day. So let's take a look at how we would go about filtering that. Now, first of all, we're going to be testing this with a one and a half horsepower Pentair variable speed pump. We have a Hayward 150 square foot cartridge filter. We have a two inch suction line that we'll be using today, as well as a two inch return line. And we'll be monitoring the flow through a series of flow meters. These are analog flow meters. This one has been adapted with a digital upgrade and we'll be taking our measurement readings from this digital flow meter. In addition to that, we need to monitor the amount of power that the pump is consuming at all times because this is going to be a very important number as part of our calculation. So there's an external wattage meter installed here so that we can monitor the amount of power consumption. The top right corner number is very important. That is the real time wattage. On the left hand side, you can see the real time current draw. So this represents an average swimming pool system. Every swimming pool system is different. Your numbers will be different, but these are real world working numbers that we can, that we can use. For example, Using this pump here, we're going to be testing on maximum speed, 3,450 RPM. And the reason we're doing that is if you have a single speed pool pump, that's the speed that you have. So let's take a look at what this pump, a one and a half horsepower, is able to achieve at 3,450 RPM. So just over 100 gallons per minute. Power consumption, 2.29 kilowatts. That's 2,290 watts, just over 10 amps of current draw. So let's talk about these numbers a little bit. 
So conservatively, we were getting 100 gallons per minute, maybe one or two more than that. And that's approximately 6,000 gallons per hour that the system is able to move. We were using 2.29 or 2,300 watts, 2.3 kilowatts, rounded up. Now, the nationwide average that you pay for your electricity is 13 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, there is calculations that you can additionally do to figure out what your exact cost will be, but just for this, this uh, calculation here, we're going to be going with an average cost of 13 cents per kilowatt hour. And if you live in Canada, it's 13 cents Canadian per kilowatt hour average that you pay. And if you live in the US, it's 13 cents per kilowatt hours in US dollars that you will pay. So it's an easy calculation to make here. And what we can see is in order to pump our filtration goal of 60,000 gallons per day, we need to run this pump for 10 hours. Running the pump for 10 hours is going to result in a total cost of $2.99 per day. Now when you extrapolate that out, that is approximately $90 per month that you would pay to operate this pump, achieving a filtration goal of 60,000 gallons per day. Now when you're making comparisons like this for investments that you hope to get a return on, you have to extrapolate over something that might be a reasonable service life for the component that you're looking to buy. And from manufacturers, they suggest that 84 months of operation is a reasonable number. And in this case, at $2.99 per day, you would be looking at $7,560 in order to operate this pump for 84 months, filtering 60,000 gallons per day. So that is how the average person with a single speed pump saves money. If you were to run this pump 24 hours a day, well, that would be an awful lot of money to do that. And you know what? It's more filtration than you need. So it's a good idea to turn off your pump part of the day. However, that cannot compare to the cost savings of a variable speed pump. And that's what I'm going to show you here. So this, this single speed pump was able to pump 60,000 gallons per day. I'm going to show you how we can pump 60,480 gallons per day with this variable speed pump for substantially less money than this. And we're gonna do it without compromising the quality of the filtration the pool gets. So the first thing that we need to look at here, you need to have times during the day where you run the pump at a higher speed, a medium speed, and a lower speed. Now, this is a mistake that a lot of people might make with a variable speed pump. They might just buy one and run it all day long at 1000 RPM and you know what, they save a lot of money, but the quality of the filtration goes way down. That's not how this is supposed to work. You need periods of time where there's a lot of flow through your system. This is very important. Now, every swimming pool system will be different. Do you have a heater or a salt water system or any other peripheral device to consider? because that will affect which numbers you choose for how many hours at high speed, medium speed, and low speed. But something like I'm looking at here with this schedule that I've created, it has a few hours at higher speed for things like the skimmer in your pool to work properly and effectively skim debris that might be floating, as well as running you know, high water demand components like large gas-fired pool heaters. I'm also going to be having about six hours or double the amount of time that I had at a higher speed at a medium speed. In this case, we're going to be looking at about 2000 RPM. And that would be enough for things like the flow switch on a saltwater system to actuate. So we'd be able to get at least nine hours every day for the saltwater system to be functioning properly. So the remaining hours of the day, a lot of people think, well, I just, you know, do this and whatever, and I program my pump for a couple hours here, a couple hours there, and then I turn it off for 12 hours. And that's the problem. It used to be, that's how you save money with a single speed pump. Every hour that your variable speed pump is off is another missed opportunity for you to save a lot of money. And I'm going to show you how here. So with this schedule, the first thing you'll notice 
is that our top speed isn't 3,450 RPM, it's 3,000. Why would that be? Well, the reason is, is you can get a lot of flow at 3,000 RPM, almost as much flow as you do at 3,450. But even a small amount of flow on this side results in a huge drop in power consumption. Let's take a look, I'll show you now. Eighty six gallons per minute, one point five three kilowatts, one thousand five hundred and thirty watts, six point nine four amps is the current draw. So on this side, we had 2,300 watts per hour for 3450. On this side, 1520. Our numbers were 1530 just now, but these calculations are based on a negligible difference of 1520. And what that means for your flow is that for three hours every day, you're going to be getting 86 gallons per minute and you're going to be paying 1,520 watts per hour. Now let's take a look at the slower speeds here. 2,055 gallons per minute and 515 watts. I'll show you those numbers now as well. And there we are, that's just what we expected to see. Just, just under the prediction of 515 watts. 2.43 amps. And then we'll jump down to 1000 and we should be seeing about 28 gallons per minute and 140 watts. There we go, 28 gallons per minute. we're even well under here 132 watts one amp even so this is even a very conservative estimate at 140 watts which is good because what you're gonna see is that the variable speed pump costs substantially less to operate here so when we calculate out our total power consumption over a 24-hour day we're looking at watts times hours and we see that the total consumption for a 24 hour day is 9,960 watts or 9.96 kilowatts. Since you pay for your power by the kilowatt hour, you would multiply 9.96 times the average of 13 cents per kilowatt hour and that equals $1.29 per day. Extrapolate it out, that's 38.84 per month. And on an 84 month service cycle, that total cost would be 3,262.90. Comparing that with the number to operate your single speed pump, what you're left with is a total savings of $4,297.10. By choosing a variable speed pump for your swimming pool, you were getting more volume per day than you were getting from a single speed pump, and it costs you substantially less 
to do so. And because you might be interested in seeing the calculations behind this, you know, what are we getting here for three hours we had 86 gallons per minute and then for six hours we had 55 and then for 15 hours we had 28. So here are those numbers here as well. In the three hour high speed schedule we got 15,000 whereas in the 15 hours at low speed you got 25,000. What is specifically interesting about that, if you look at the power consumption during these periods of time, the 15 hours of operation at low speed used less, less than half of the power of the three hours at higher speed. That's really interesting because you paid more in power to get 15,000 than you did to get the 25,000. And that's why cumulatively the single speed just can't compete. It cannot compete. 60,480 gallons per day with a variable speed pump for $38 per day and over a service life of the pump you're going to be saving $4,300. And it's specifically specifically interesting when people compare variable speed pumps and single speed pumps they often say that there are thousands of dollars of difference between them but there's not you know a typical variable speed pump might only be five hundred dollars more at, or at most a thousand dollars more than you would pay for a comparable single speed pump but as you can see you are easily easily going to be recouping that cost with your, with your fil filtration schedule being three times the volume of your pool every day. And if you do this, you're going to save a substantial amount of money. I don't want to see any arguments in the comment section because there's no way you can argue with these numbers. It is conclusive. Variable speed pumps are what you need and you need to get one right away. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.